Okay, so as you can see, uh, that was a study project for my uh, bachelor's uh, thesis. Uh, I did it with my supervisor, uh, Maciej Berensewicz, but he's not uh, present today. Uh, what can I tell you more? Uh, I started my master's degree now in October, and I will uh, continue with the project. Okay, some agenda. Uh, Introduction, uh, some motivation why the uh, project uh, um, was started. Then uh, some uh, procedure about the technology used, uh, results, summary, and bibliography. Okay, so, uh, let's start. Okay, so when it comes to uh, aerial photographs, uh, it's commonly used that uh, it's uh, nowadays common uh, use of big data, and uh, when it comes to uh, solar panel uh, installations in Poland, there is no uh, obligation to record it to any uh, office. So basically, you can install such a um, system, uh, gain some energy, and uh, do not uh, record it to any office. So uh, we do have a problem with the amount of uh, panels in Poland because when there is no need to uh, record it. We don't know how many panels do we have. And as we know, the European Union, uh, so all the countries uh, from the European Union, uh, signed a paper uh, in 2008 that, uh, so they said that they will increase the number of uh, renewable energy to 20%. Also, Poland did it. So it it's going to be nice to have some metrics about how many panels do we have. Okay, so uh, yeah, so one approach is just to uh, identify the panels from the uh, space without the knowledge of the uh, yeah of the people. Okay, so when it comes to the existing knowledge about uh, solar panels in Poland, we do have uh, three main. Uh, sources, operators. So when you produce too much energy and you would like to sell it, you have to contact your operator and then you can sell the energy for 80% of, uh, of the price. So it's not worth it, in general. And uh, yeah, and they have all the statistics, so they know about the uh, installation power. Then it comes with Central Statistic Office. They uh, create every year a, rap, a, a, a report. It's named uh, Energy from uh, Renewable uh, Resources. But it's a, summer, it's a questionnaire uh, based on a sample of 4,500. So, yeah, it's not reliable. And there's one alternative. Uh, it's PW Monitor. It's a portal where uh, you can... Uh, like add your uh, system to the uh, site so you see how many, uh, for example, solar panels are in Poland or in the city, but this is not obligatory. Okay, so when it comes to detecting panels, uh, I found uh, two uh, projects. The first one, Deep Solar, uh, it was uh, conducted by uh, the University of Stanford. They used Google Maps and they carried out the analysis uh, to the whole uh, states. So yeah, they analyzed, analyzed pretty a lot of pictures, uh, over 300,000, and at the end they uh, had 90% of uh, accuracy, pretty good. And a project from Europe, FFM from Europe, uh, Deep Solaris from the Netherlands, uh, they did it uh, the same, but uh, they train the model on every uh, city separate. Also more than 90% accuracy. Okay, about the procedure. So when it comes to data, I didn't use Google Maps. Uh, we, we found out that we can find better data. Uh, so when it comes to the data from the Geopos, uh, it has some resolution, five centimeters per one, per one pixel, and I found that uh, Google Maps has uh, 15 meters per, per one pixel. So, uh, yeah, it's a huge difference. 
uh, and there was a raid because it's uh, a real photograph, so there has to be a plane that uh, takes the pictures. So uh, it was seven days in 2016, and uh, after we uh, sent a paper, we got over uh, 100 gigabytes of photographs, and it was in TIFF format. Mm, and we also uh, sent a, a paper for the layer of buildings, because uh, the, mm, that w these were all uh, just uh, images without the buildings of the uh, layers. So we didn't know where are the buildings, where is a, a parking, or where is a church. And when it comes to the spatial data processing, it was done in R, so it's also a, a it's also possible to conduct uh, projects in two uh, programming languages. So here's an example how it looks. Uh, so here's the uh, the building layer. As you can see, it's a red area, and probably you see that uh, it's not perfect uh, fitting. So yeah, that was a problem. What I am, I'm gonna uh, talk about it later. Yeah, so it, when it comes to the population, I analyzed uh, just Poznan, so 42,000 buildings, and uh, I was uh, searching for uh, roofs with solar panels. Okay, so when it comes to the spatial uh, data processing, uh, as you saw, uh, the building layer was not perfectly fitted to the uh, images, so we had to use some buffer it was uh, half meter, and at the end uh, we used the ju just the buildings from one section because we got like three uh, three thousand images, and sometimes a building was in two separate files, so we didn't include this uh, because it would be hard to combine. And yeah, that, so at the end we just took this nine thousand three hundred buildings. So uh, here are the buildings without the uh, space, just the roof. Yeah, and you see that, that here is the buffer ap applied, so we gained a little bit more information. But sometimes, as you can see, it was still cut. And yeah, of, ro of course, here are some panels, and as you can see also that uh, it's not always the same angle of the panel. Sometimes it's laying, sometimes it has some degrees. So when, uh, when it comes to technologies used, uh, at the beginning I used uh, Keras, but I had some issues because uh, I used uh, my university technology uh, infrastructure and we didn't have any GPU, so doing Keras without GPU is yeah pretty hard. So I found this uh, package in Python. Uh, it's an object detection system which Apple acquired uh, two years ago for over 100 million of dollars. And this package is based on on YOLO, so you only look once, a deep learning uh, framework. And at the end I used AWS because it uh, didn't make any uh, sense to yeah, use CPU. So when it comes to YOLO, the uh, engine behind uh, to recreate, this is how it, uh, yeah, it tracks and uh, identifies the objects. So uh, there's always a rectangle with a label of the uh, of the object. And uh, as you can see, there c it's possible that these layers are uh, laying underneath. So how is YOLO working? And uh, in general, to recreate it. Uh, converts the image to a smaller one, and then it uh, provides a, a grid, 13 by 13. So uh, this is the first step. Then uh, two uh, roads. Here we uh, predict, here the uh, bounding box uh, predictions, and here's the class prediction. Uh, and this does not mean that here is a dog. This does mean when there is an object, it's a dog. So it's a class probability, conditional class probability. And at the end, we combine these 
uh, two like approaches and we get a bounding box with a probability and the class. Okay, so when it comes to the uh, loss function, uh, there's uh, three parts, uh, classification loss, localization loss, so uh, the error between the uh, predicted bounding box, so the predicted rectangle, and the uh, rectangle uh, done manually, and confidence loss. Okay, so I had to annotate the images, and it was a long process because I had to uh, annotate over 4,000 images. So I used uh, VGG uh, Image Annotator. It's a uh, yeah, well-known annotator, and basically at the end I uh, got a CSV file with the uh, with the photo name and uh, with the coordinates. Some results. So when it comes to results, uh, yeah, here's the training. So don't look at this. Basically, uh, yeah, training took over 10 hours at uh, AWS, and uh, here's here are the results for the uh, test uh, group. And uh, as you can see, uh, the model has some problems with. Uh, basically, it has some problems with Windows. Some Windows. Uh, just look like panels, so in most of the cases uh, the model uh, predicts badly some windows, it, it says that it's a panel, but it's not. Yeah, precision 93%, wind recall nearly one. Okay, so now some images. So this is how it looks, you probably don't see that, but here's also a probability. So here was uh, just 40% of, of probability that it's a panel, and here is like 98, uh, 89. So that's a correct one. Here's also a correct one, but here is the angle of the uh, system a little bit different, but still predicted correctly. Um, that was an uncertain because we didn't uh, know if it's a panel or just a window. It's sometimes just uh, difficult for the human eye to identify it. Yeah, and some not valid uh, examples. So, uh, yeah, that's a roof without any panel, but uh, the, stru the structure of the roof, uh, yeah, it looks like, like a panel, so the model predicted it's a panel what's not correct. Yeah, this one was not uh, recognized. Uh, I don't know why, but maybe uh, due to the fact that it's a shadow here, so yeah. Uh, also unrecognized, uh, but it's uh, probably due to the fact that uh, the uh, color of the roof is uh, similar to the panel, so it might uh, yeah, be the reason why it's not recognized. Yeah, we uh, predicted then we took the model, we took the all, all the images, and we uh, predicted, and here's a map of Poznań with all the solar uh, systems. Yeah, and as you can see, uh, there are districts without panels. Here's some uh, huge residential blocks, and it's nice to see that basically it does make sense that uh, in areas where in the, in the center of Poznań there are no uh, solar panels. Yeah, it's Correct because the roofs are uh, there is there's no space for some panels, but in the suburbs, in the most of the cases, there are the most uh, panels. Summary: So we predicted and found uh, 476 uh, panels, and we checked it manually. So it's the minimum number of panels in Poznan, and it's about two percent of the buildings. Uh, when it comes to uh, the project, it was the first in Poland. Uh, and as you, as you could see, uh, the greater the, uh, the, mo the model has the biggest problem with recognizing panels where they are not present. But when there is a panel, it, it's going to be pr uh, predicted and found. And uh, yeah, as you can see, the uh, Deep Solaris project, they had an issue with 
using the model in other uh, cities. So probably we're going to have the same problem that uh, the, mo the model from Poznań will not be good in, for example, Warsaw. And that's an example of a joint uh, project in R and Python. Okay, bibliography. And that's all. Thanks. Questions? Yes. Uh, what version of YOLO uh, do you use? Uh, to recreate is uh, tiny YOLO. Okay. So it's uh, YOLO for uh, so the second version, but it's uh, with some secret. They write something like, we use tiny YOLO with some modifications. So at the end, we don't know basically uh, the weights and anything, but that's a, it's a simple uh, framework to predict some, yeah. Okay, but did you try something uh, more sophisticated, like faster CNN or masker CNN? No, I just wanted to basically, uh, I wanted to use a framework that is easy, fast, and uh, yeah, as I said, uh, I uh, conducted the analysis on, on Keras, but it was, uh, hard to train and I had to keep changing and keep training and I didn't have time and the resources so no I didn't use okay, maybe in the future and did you use um, pre-trained model uh, no but uh, I couldn't find any good um, data sources I, I was searching for some panels like a data source but I couldn't find there's uh, there's a data source from uh, the deep solar project but it was uh, a bad uh, resolution because they took the images from Google Maps and I had some other resolution, but uh, yeah, so I f uh, think that at the end it wouldn't make any sense. So I took the time and found all the panels and then annotated them. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any more questions to a speaker? All right. Maybe comments? Okay, so thank you so much for your talk. Thanks. And yeah, big applause.